Hello guys, so this is a Thursday lecture. And today we're gonna finish uh, BGT amplifiers. And we're gonna start, you know, uh, another type of transistor, which is the NMOS transistors, or most transistors in general, okay? This lecture will be in two parts, okay? Uh, in two uh, separate videos. So this is the first video, the first part, uh, in which I will just, you know, uh, complete uh, BGT amplifiers. So one last topic that we should talk about is uh, the multi-stage amplification. Last lecture, we touched upon this. Uh, we said that we use common collector amplifier, which is which has gain equal almost to one, uh, when we want to interface uh, a, a source with high internal resistance to a load with very low resistance. And we see that at that if we if we put in between a uh, common collector, this will enhance you know uh, the transfer of the voltage from the source to the load. Okay. And we said that uh, a practical situation is that this source is not you know a practical source like a voltage source you know or power source or a power supply. It's actually uh, a common uh, emitter stage. So some amplifier, some common, common, common emitter amplifier that has very high gain, but it has very high output resistance. So if we compare it to the load, most of the output voltage, most of the amplification will go to the, you know, the output resistance and, and minor part of that uh, amplification will go to the load. So we need to put common collector in between. So in this lecture, we're gonna touch upon uh, multi-stage amplifiers in which we use two uh, amplifiers. They may be of the same type. Both are common collector or common base or common, uh, collect, uh, or common emitter. Or maybe, uh, you know, uh, a common collector with a common emitter or a common collector with a common base or a common emitter with a common base based on the application. So we usually uh, combine uh, two or more uh, amplifiers together to enhance the amplification characteristics. And when we say enhance the amplification or improve the amplification characteristics, we mean improve either AV, the voltage gain, or improve uh, the input resistance, make it high, or improve the output, res output resistance, make it low. Or maybe, you know, a combination of these three uh, uh, characteristics, okay? So the first example we see here is actually a two-stage amplifier, okay? It's called a cascaded common emitter amplifier. So we have here uh, two common emitters. Just look at this, uh, the first stage, stage one. So stage one here, it's a common emitter. Why? Because the input is at the base and the output is at the collector. So let's call this base one, collector one, because we have two transistors here. Then this output will be, you know, connected to the input of the second transistor, Q2. So here is B2. So output one is actually V input two. V input is of stage two. And then the output again is from the collector. So that's why it's both are common emitter. And the V output two is actually the main output of the whole circuit, the two stages together. So we have V input one at the base, V output one at the collector of the first, first transistor. That's why it's common emitter. Then this output is actually the same as the input to the same to the next stage, stage two. And the output of stage two, which is VO2, is actually the main output of the whole circuit, VO. So we have here two stages, both of them are common emitter. 
and that configuration is called cascaded common emitter amplifiers. Okay, so let's put some numbers and try to solve this uh, problem. Okay, so R1 is 100 kilo ohms. So, and both stages are identical. So, stage one, and two are identical, identical. So R1 both mid kilo ohms here, here and here. The R2 is 47 kilo ohms. Beta is 100. RL is two kilo ohms. RC is 6.8 kilo ohms. RE is 3.9 kilo ohms. Let me check one last time about uh, the numbers. Yes, they are right. Okay. Okay, so let's solve this uh, or this, let's analyze this circuit. Okay, so let's first start by the DC. So DC analysis, let's solve it with, with blue. So number one, DC analysis. So yes, it's a very big circuit, you know, it, maybe it looks scary for you, but believe me, when you just apply the rules, okay, you will find it easy. So let's see how, why it's easy. So, in DC, all capacitors are open. So this guy will be open. So this part will be removed. We don't need it in DC, I mean. This capacitor is, is open. So these two circuits will not be connected in DC. And this capacitor is open. So this part, which is RL, is also removed in DC, I mean. And this is open, so we have RE in DC. This is also open, so we have RE in DC. So if we do this, let's now draw the circuits without the capacitors. So we'll have that situation. VCC and VCC by the way is equal to nine volt. I forget this. And here is RC, RE, R2, R1. And remember the circuit, the two circuits, two stages are identical. And then we will not draw the capacitor in between because it's open. So we have another circuit. Again, RC, R1, R2, RE, and same transistor with the same beta equal to 100. So we end up with two identical circuits. And they are, of course, isolated in DC. So just to solve one of them and the numbers that you get from uh, any one will be, of course, applicable to the second, the second one. So if you get IB, IB1 is equal to IB2, IB in Transistor one is equal to IB of transistor two or circuit two. IC here is also IC here. VBE is also VB and so on. So we'll just solve one of them. Okay. Uh, so the two circuits are identical. So we just solve one of them. 
Good. And we learned how to do that. We usually make sevenths, the seven equivalent. of the voltage divider. VCC, here is RC, RE, R7, V7. R7 will be R1 parallel R2. And this is will be 31.97 kilo ohms. And V7 will be uh, the voltage across R2. So it will be 2877 volt. So in that loop here, we can write its equation. So IB, which is flowing in that direction, equal to V7 minus 0.7 over R7 plus theta plus one RE. And based on that, let's divide this into halves. Based on that, IB will be equal to uh, uh, five point, sorry, this is not five, five point one one micro -hands. Then of course IE or IC, because again, IE usually equal to IC, just forget in active region, equal to beta IB, so it will be 0.516 milliampere. And we can determine VC of course, to be sure we are in the active region, VCC minus ICRC, and it will be 5.52. We can also determine VB to check that the junction two is, you know, is reverse. So VB is equal to V7 minus IB R7. So the voltage here minus the voltage drop across R7. So this guy will be 2.71. It's very sure that since VC is larger than VB, then G2, the junction between the collector and the base is reverse as expected, of course. And we can determine RB, RB, I'm sorry, RB. RB is VT over IB. Uh, VT is 25 millivolt, IB you just calculated. So this will be 4.89 kilo ohms. Okay, good. So let's go do the AC analysis. So in EC, it's now use another color. So let's you know remove these illustrations since we did it for DC. Okay, so let's do another color, green for example. So in EC, the capacitors are short. So this guy will be shorted. This guy will be shorted. This guy will be shorted. So RE will be will just will in AC will be uh, will not be counted because it is just zero. Again, this one here will be shorted. What else? And this also will be shorted. So now both stages are connected, not just not like DC. And this is also shorted here. What else? Then we cancel DC sources. So we'll cancel VCC. So VCC will be just a ground. And now let's draw the AC equivalent circuit. So number two. the AC analysis. We started by, we started by 
uh, the two transistors. So for transistor one, we have R by like this, and we have beta IB one. Here is R by. Remember R by one equal to R by two. So we'll just call them R by because IB here is IB here. So VT over IB is equal to VT over IB. So both R bytes are, are equivalent. So we'll just call, call it R by. Here is IB1. Here is B1, C1, E1 for transistor one. And here is the other transistor. Beta IB2, R by IB2. Now let's connect the other parts of the circuit. So let's start by base one. So base one, here is base one. Between base one and the ground, we have R1, we have R2. Actually, R1 and R2 are parallel now because in EC, parallel means they are connected with two same terminals, terminal one and terminal two. So they are connected with the same terminal here and also the same terminal, which is the ground, the other terminal. So we have here R1, parallel R2. What else? Also, B1 is connected to R signal and the V signal. And that's it for B1. Now let's connect uh, emitter one. So here is the emitter of the first transistor. And I, as you see, because we shorted R2, it's connected to ground directly. So it's connected to ground here. That's good. Now collector one. So between collector one and the ground, remember VCC now is grounded. We have RC. And C1 or collector one is connected to base one. So here is base, I'm sorry, base two, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the equivalent circle of the second transistor. Here is base two, base two. here is C2, here is E2. And C1 is connected to base one. Now let's go to the second transistor. So let's start to be the base. So between the base and the ground, we have these two transistors, R1 and R2. And now also R1 and R2 are, are, are in parallel because they are connected to the same, same start, or same first terminal and same second terminal, which is the ground. So between base two and the ground, we have R1 again, parallel R2. R1 of the second circuit parallel to R2 of the second circuit. Now emitter two, nothing else with base, with base two. Now emitter two, again, emitter two is also connected to ground now in AC because uh, the capacitor will short RE, so RE2 or the emitter two will be connected to ground. And that's it for E2, now C2. Between C2 and the ground, we have RC. And we also have this branch, which is RL. And that's it. So this is, you know, the total set. Yeah, it's long. 
But again, when we go into the analysis now, we'll find that it's easy. Before we continue, let's mark the important points in our set. First, where is the input? Here is the input. And now since you have two stages, make it the input one. And here is our input of the whole circuit. which is our input one at the same time. And the input one is actually the input of the whole circuit at the same time. Where is the output one? The output one is between collector and, collector one and the ground. So here is the output one. Where is the input two? It is the voltage at base two. So here is, and the base two by the way is connected to to collector one. So here is the input two, which is, happens to be the same as the output one. And where is the output two? It's a voltage across this, the resistor RL or the load resistance or RC because they are in parallel. So this is VO2, which happens to be the same as the main output of the circuit, VO. And if we are interested, where is our input two? Our input two is between the terminals of the input two. So it, it should be here, looking at that, but we don't need it in that, in that particular, uh, unless of course the, the question asked ask it for it. So let's analyze now the AC. And when, when we say analyze AC, I mean, we found our input, we find our output, we find a V node, a V and GV. Main start. So let's start by, uh, okay, let's take it to another, you know, let's copy and paste this. So our input, number one, our input equal to. So when we look here, okay. Remember this portion of the circuit is isolated from that portion. and from that portion as well. So the three portions are isolated, okay? So basically, just by looking into uh, the circuit here, you find that our input is actually equal to R1, barrel R2, barrel R1. If you want to do it, you know, in details, You can say it's equal to R1 barrel R2, barrel the, 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 the resistance seen after R1 barrel R2. Let's call it our input dash. So this is equal to R1, R2, and what is our input dash? So the voltage between these two points, this point and the ground, which is which happens to be the input one. Over the current, which is IB1. R1, R2. The input one is actually the voltage of R by, which is IB1 R by. And the current is IB1. So again, when you get to the same conclusion, R1, R2, R5 in barrel. Good. Let's calculate by, by, by let's cal calculate this this value. This is 100 kilo barrel, 47 kilo barrel with 489 kilo ohms, 
So this will reduce to uh, four to four ohms. Number two, RO. RO is uh, uh, resistance seen by the load. So we look in that direction. And when we do that, we should cancel the source. It's the independent source. And in that case, it's V signal. So we're going to short V signal. So when you short V signal, what, what's going to happen here is that IB1 in that circuit, the source that provides this IB1 is shorted. So IB1 will be zero. So beta IB1 is also zero. So IB2, will be also zero because it's the same, you know, in the in this in this middle circuit in here. There is no source to feed it. So beta IB2 again zero or open circuit. So you will end up that RO is equal to RC. And RC is 6.8 kilo ohms. It's pretty high. Look, we said that a good circuit should have uh, low output resistance, high input resistance. And if you look here, you know, the output resistance is actually higher than the input resistance. So till this moment, we doubt where is, uh, where is uh, the advantage of having two stages, but we, we will get to it now. Number three. AV. Let's let's also make it you know uh, uh, AV for stage one, then AV for stage two. So let's start by AV one. AV one is equal to VO one over V input one. Okay. So here is the output one, the voltage across either this resistance or I'm sorry or this resistance, R1 parallel R2, or this resistance, R1, because all the three resistances are in parallel, right? So we can say that VO1 is equal to, since the current that is coming out of these three branches is, it's added up. So if we assume that we have three currents flowing like this, so these three currents will add up to beta IB beta IB1, which is the current in that current source. But this current is flowing from bottom to up, so the voltage is neg positive negative, opposite to V output one. So minus beta IB1 RC barrel R1 barrel R2 barrel R bar. And what is the input one? The input one is the voltage across R1 barrel R2 or bar by, which is uh, actually IB1 R bar. So EV1 equal to minus beta IB RC barrel R1 barrel R2 barrel R by over IB1 R by IB1, I'm sorry, this is IB1, yeah. IB1 will go with IB1, so we'll end up with minus beta RC barrel R1 barrel R2 barrel R by over R by. So we can calculate it as well, so if we calculate this value of this term, we find that EV1 is equal to minus 53.37. Good, number four, 
AV2. So stage one will give us amplification of 53. Stage two, VO2 over V input two. Let's go back to the circuit to check that. So here is VO2, the voltage across RL or RC, or the parallel combination of them. So the parallel combination of RL and RC has a current flowing from bottom to up, which is beta IB2. So VO2 equal to minus beta IB2, and the parallel combination of uh, RL barrel or Let's write it in that way, RC, barrel RL. And V input, sorry, V input two is the voltage across R by or R1 barrel R2 or RC. In a specific R by, we know the current flowing through it, which is IB2. So IB2 R by, this is the voltage, IB2. R by. Now, if we compensate V output 2 minus beta IB2 RC barrel RL over IB2 R by IB2 will go with IB2. So we end up with minus beta RC RL over R by. Good. Number five. The total gain. This should be VO over VN. Remember, VO is actually VO2. And VN is actually V input one. Let's multiply and divide by V input two. We didn't do anything. This is equal to VO2 over V input two, V input two over V input one. Again, we didn't do anything. But remember, V input two is actually equal to V output one. So we can write this again as, first term is the same, V, input, v output two over V input two, but I will replace V input two here by V output one. And what is this? This is AV two, look, AV two. And what is this? This is AV one. AV1, which we, which we did already calculated, right? So AV equal to AV1 multiplied by AV2, so equal to uh, AV1 minus 53.37, AV2 is, ah, we didn't calculate, I'm sorry. So we can calculate this value and it will be minus 31.69, I'm very sorry for this. So AV2 is minus 31.669. So that will be a massive number, 1691.29. And here is the advantage of using multi-stage amplifier. Okay, so our input was the same, exactly the same. Our output was exactly the same as common emitter. But now we know that common emitter usually have uh, amplification from tens to a few hundreds. Now we have thousands, 1,600. So, uh, and also we get rid of the phase shift because minus multiplied by minus become positive. So we get also rid of the, the, the phase shift that we have with the common emitter amplifier. Although it's not a big problem. No. So the advantage of this circuit is to have uh, is to have very high amplification. Amplifications that you may not be able to produce with only one stage. And for all amplifiers, uh, you know, 
for for <laughs> for all multi-stage amplifiers, usually the gain is a multiplication factors. The gain of the first stage multiplied by the gain of the second stage, and so on. Why? Because of this this relation here. You know, this trick that we did is always valid for any kind of multi-stage amplifier. Number six, and finally, GV. GV is equal to AV, uh, our input, our input plus our signal. So AV is 1691.29. Our input we calculated, it was, uh, let, let me go up. It was, how much? It was, ah, we, ah yeah. 4.24 kilo ohms. 4.24 kilo ohms. And I'm, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mention uh, how much is our signal. So our signal, let me do it in the last slide. So our signal here is, uh, Uh, five kilo ohms, five kilo ohms. This five, so this will be around half, okay? So seven, seven, six point. Okay, so this is a first example about multi-stage amplifiers, okay? And we see here that when, when we cascade two common emitters together, the, uh, the amplification become massive, very big. Okay. Now let's have another example. Example two. It's exactly same as the last uh, example, but here our L is 50 ohms. So our L equal to 50 ohms. Our signal is still the same, five kilo ohms. And this is 100 kilo, 47 kilo, uh, 6.8 kilo ohms, and 3.9 kilo ohms. Okay, and again, beta is equal to 100 for both transistors. So let's examine first what kind of stages we have. So we have here the input stage. Then we have another stage here. Which has input as its base and output as its collector. So this is a common emitter stage. So stage one here. Is a common emitter stage. Here is another stage. And this stage has an input at its base, but the output is at its emitter. So this is a common collector. So stage two is a common, collect common collector uh, amplifier. Then you have the output. And basically, uh, as you see here, our load is very small, it's 50 ohms. And you know, common emitter has very high output resistance, RC which is in that case, 6.8 kilo ohms. So it's much, much, much higher than the RL. So if we just connect our L to the common emitter stage, we will, we will not see any amplification, as we will see later. That's why we bought this common collector in between. So let's, you know, analyze the circuit again and see what kind of advantage we got. So number one, again, is a DC analysis.
So in DC, we just cancel all the capacitors, okay? All the capacitors will be open circuit. So let's do that, let's apply this. So uh, if we do this, the input stage will be removed. The output load will be also removed. And these two circuits will be just isolated because we are connected using capacitor and the capacitor now is open. So it's like, it's like you have an open between. So they are not connected. So let's draw them without the capacitors. So this is stage, stage one. Has the same analysis as the previous example. There is no change at all, okay? Same R1, same R2, same beta, same RC and same RC. Similarly, so again, we will have IB equal to 5.11 microamperes, IC equal to IE, approximately equal to, you know, uh, how much? Uh, 0.516 milliamperes. And, you know, again, uh, VC will be equal to 5.52 volt. And VB still the same, 2.71 volt. And R by, of course, is the same, equal to, let's call it R by one now, 489 kilohertz. But how about, you know, the second stage. So the second stage by sevenin will be something like this. And if you do sevenin, you will find that R7 and V7 are exactly equal to the values that we got in the previous example. So nothing new here. So R7 and V7 both have same values from previous example. That's not previous at all. Previous example. That's why IB and IE will be the same and IC also will be the same. So that will lead that IB again equal to 511 microampere and IE equal to IC equal to 0.516 milliamperes. And since IB is equal to IB2 or the transistor is equal to IB for the transistor one, so RB, R by two is equal to R by one equal to R by equal to four, eight, nine kilo ohms. But the difference here is that VC now is nine volt, not five volt, but VB is still the same, but we're still in active region, okay? Good. So let's now go to the EC circuit, EC equivalent circuit. 
So number two, so let's have a line here. The AC analysis. So base one, emitter one, I'm sorry, collector one, and the emitter one. Then base two, collector two. And the emitter two. And here is R by and also R bar. Here is IB1. Here is IB2. Okay, let's continue the, the rest of the circuit. So, uh, of course, in AC, the capacitors will be short. So, RE1 will be just removed. But RE2 will not be removed. RE2 will be still there and better with RL. This guy will be shorted. It will be grounded. The VCC, I mean. And we connect the two stages together now in EC. Okay. There is the base, base one. Between the base and the ground, we have R1. And we have R2. So the, we will have R1 barrel R2. So... R1 barrel R2. Then we will have our signal and V signal. And emitter one, since this is shorted, so R E will be also shorted. To ground, so emitter one is connected to ground. Here is beta IP2. How about collector one? So if we look here, collector now one now is connected to base two. Like this. Now let's go now to the second uh, to the sec and and before this and also is between the collector one and the ground there is RC. So this is the last thing in that stage. Now let's go to the second transistor, second circuit. I'm sorry. So between base two and the ground we have R two and we have R one. R1 barrel R2. And that's it. The collector is connected to ground. And between the emitter and the ground, there is RL and RE in parallel. So here is the emitter. We'll have here. R L R E in barrel. And before we con that, now we finished. Before we continue, just mark where is V input one, V input two, and also. So this is V input one, which happens to be the same input of the circuit. So V input one is actually equal to V input of the whole circuit. V output one is here. Which happens to be the same as V input two. And VO2 here, which happens to be the same as V of the circuit. Good. Let's draw a line. So number one. R1 
are input. If you look between these two terminals, our input is easy, R1, barrel R2, barrel R1. I'm sorry, here is, uh, this is IB1, not IB2. This is IB1, and here is, I'm sorry, I forgot to draw IB2, beta IB2, yeah. Okay, number two, let's do now the AVs. So, AV1 equal to V output one over V input one. And it will be very complicated to do it because you have many resistances, you have many, you know, currents and stuff. So a good way to do that is to determine our input two. Remember, if we look between these two terminals here, we find our input two. So that means we can replace all that portion of the circuit and both our input two in instead of it. So let's calculate our input two. This will make our analysis very easy. So we will look between these two terminals, as I said. So just ignore the rest of the circuit and just focus on that, on that part. So we're gonna draw it again. beta IB2 R by RL RE R1 barrel R2 and let's assume there is you know, a source Vx reduces the current to called Ix. And our input two is equal to Vx over Ix. Remember, I am doing our input two not because I want to do, to do our input two. I'm doing that to facilitate the analysis to get EV1, the uh, amplification of the first stage, okay? So we can say that uh, our input two equal to R1 barrel R2 barrel the resistance seen from these two terminals. Let's call it our input dash between this one and the ground. So this R input dash is equal to the voltage between these two terminals, this terminal and the ground, okay? Which is Vx over that current, which is Ib2. So from that loop here, Vx is Ib2. Let's do it in another. Vx is Ib2 R by plus the voltage across RL or RE or the voltage across the barrel combination. Remember the barrel combination has a current which is Ib2 plus beta Ib2. So beta plus one, IB2, multiplied by RE, barrel RL. So R in dash 
equal to Vx is Ib2 R by plus Ib2 beta plus one Re barrel RL over Ib2. Ib2 will go away. So Rn2 equal to R1 barrel R2 and finally barrel R input dash which is R by plus beta plus one RL barrel R. Uh, are nice. Now we can remove all the second stage and just put our input in our input two into it. So the the set it will be in that way here. Our input two, which already calculated. RC. Beta IB1 R by R1 barrel R2 V signal I sig R signal and here is V input one and here is VO one. Now it become a lot easier, a lot easier. Because now VO one is basically like this current, which is beta IB minus beta IB because it's flowing from down up in the parallel combination of RC and R input two. And the input one is just the, the voltage across R by, which is IB1 R by. I'm sorry, this is IB1. I always make it two IB1, IB1 R by. So based on that, if we go to another page, so now EV one equal to, so, VO1 is minus beta IB1 RC barrel R input two, which is a very big resistance uh, over uh, IB1 R by. So this will go with this. So we end up with this very long equation minus beta RC barrel. And our input two is uh, R1 barrel R2. Uh, what else? It's very long. Yeah, barrel R by. Plus beta plus one. R uh, E barrel R L. Okay. Over R bar. That's why if you do it with the same circuit without compensating the second stage with its input resistor, it will be very complicated. But with this trick, we solve it easy, easily. So this is AV1. And by the way, everything here is known. So you can calculate AV1. AV1 will be, uh, Minus yeah, this one. Sorry. Minus uh, seventy three point two one. Okay, number two. AV2. AV2 is VO2 over V input 2. And that's a lot easier. So let's go back and copy and paste the, the circuit. 
that we have. We can just go with the original circuit. No problem with that. So VO2 is equal to the voltage across RE or RL, or the parallel combination of them. And what is the current that's flowing in the parallel combination is that this current, which is the addition of that current, which is IB2, and the addition of that current, which is beta IB2. So it's actually beta plus one IB2 multiplied by RE parallel RL. And the V input two is the voltage across R1 parallel R2, or from that going to ground, which is that voltage, the voltage of R by and R and the VO2. So V input two is actually equal to uh, uh, IB2 R by plus VO2, which is beta. Uh, let's do it in another case. Beta one, IB two, RE barrel RL. So EV two equal to VO two, which is IB two, R by. I'm sorry, VO VO two is beta plus one, IB two, RE barrel RL over IB2 R by plus, same as the numerator, beta plus one IB2 RE barrel RL. IB2 will go away, so this will end up with beta plus one RE barrel RL over R by plus beta plus one RE barrel RL. If we compensate now, because everything here is known, this will be uh, slightly like didn't do the math here. Yeah, point five one. So it's less than one. And we know that for for common collector, the uh, the best case for the voltage gain is one. That is the best case. If our load is equal to infinity, but our load here is not infinity at all. Our load here is very small. So remember, our E here is uh, 3.9 kilo, and our L is just 50 ohms, which is 0 0.05 kilo ohms. It's very small. That's why it's 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 half, not close to one. Till this moment, we can't see you know <laughs> advantage, okay? But we will we'll prove it now. So number three, the overall gain EV. Again, EV is equal to VO two or VO. Over the input, VO is actually VO2. This is the second stage, the second stage output, and VM is actually the first stage input, V input one. Then we, again we can multiply by V input two over V input two. We didn't do anything, so VO2 over V in two. We didn't do anything. V in two over V in one. But we know that V in two is actually equal to VO. One. This is equal to VO2 over VN2 multiplied by VO1 over VN1. This is AV2. This is again EV1. So again, if you have any cascaded stages, AV is equal to 
the gain of the first stage multiplied by the gain of the second stage multiplied by the gain of the third stage and so on. So AV equal to, we can just multiply the two numbers, 0.51 multiplied by uh, minus 73.21. Uh, this will give us minus 17.065. Uh, or again, minus, approximately minus 17. Number four, GV. GV is equal to AV, RN over RN plus R signal. That's very straightforward. Uh, I'm sorry, this is, I'm sorry, uh, AV is, AV total is minus 37.19. And GV is minus, this is the one that's minus 17.064. Okay. But now, where is the advantage? What the common collector added to us in that circuit? It, till this moment, it just complicates the analysis. So let's, you know, uh, remove the common collector and just hook because be, be, again, common collector reduces the gain. So when we added the common collector, we multiply the common collector added again of, of half, okay? So let's remove it. Let's see what's, what's gonna happen. So let's have a thick line here. The situation. with no common collector stage. So if we did this, we will have, this, we will have, the, we will have the following. We will have a circuit, the common emitter. Same circuit. And the output is just connected directly to the load of 50 ohms. Okay. The DC of the first stage will not change. So we have a stay, same R by, same IB, same IC. But let's now check what will be the gain? So this will be a very straightforward uh, uh, AC smooth signal model. Let's draw it very quick. RC, RL, it is VO, eta IB. Now there is no one because just one stage and R1 barrel R2, R signal and V signal. If we do the math here, AV will be equal to minus theta RC barrel RL over R bar. E equal minus 100, five kilo ohms, five kilo, barrel 0 0.05 over 489 kilo, equal. Five barrel 0 0.05 is approximately 0 0.05. You can verify it yourself, it's easy over 489. So this is equal to minus five over 489. This is minus one, zero, two, two. So it's approximately one. So you, because of the load, because the load is very small, 
extremely small compared to our output of the circuit, which is RC. That's why the parallel combination between RC and, and RL, you know, goes to RL, which is small, so the EV become also small. And the, the situation become worse when we, do the, when we do GV. So GV is equal to EV, our input, over our input plus our signal, so minus 1.22, 4, uh, 2, 4, over 4, 2, 4, plus 5. It's a, this is approximately half. So this will be point minus 0.4689. So it's even worse. So with, with, with no common collector, if we just connect uh, the load to our circuit, to our common emitter, I mean, we will actually we will get attenuation, not amplification. But the common collector, although it has common uh, voltage gain less than one, it, it, had, it was have in that case, but it isolates this very small uh, load from our common collector stage. So the gain would still hold larger than one. It was 17. Of course, that's much better than half. Okay, guys, so again, when we do multi-staging uh, amplifiers, we do that for a purpose. The purpose is to enhance the characteristics of the amplification, either AV, our input, or our output, okay? Still, there is one uh, example that I wanna do with you, but it will be a homework, which is a, a common emitter with a common base. Okay, this is also a famous circuit it's called the Cascode Amplifier. It has a weird name, but this is a, this is the name that's famous for. It's called the Cascode Amplifier. Okay, it should be also easy to analyze. I will give you hints in the homework how to do the analysis. Okay, in order to get the solution. Okay, guys. So again, this was part one of Sarah's Day lecture, and I will publish soon tomorrow or on Saturday. Part two, which will be the introduction to NMOS transistor. Well, thank you very much and have a great day. Bye bye.